lots of us are looking at solar power these days to try and bring down our energy bills to be a bit more sustainable. But finding a bunch of components that are all compatible is ever so hard. But the best way we found to do it is start with a charge controller and work your way out. Today, we're going to show you how to do that. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. My name's Hugh, and together with the fantastic Fiona, I run this small holding here in rural Lincolnshire, where we produce our own food. We produce our own firewood to cook and heat. We harvest rainwater to irrigate our crops, and much, much more besides, even down to making our own soap. And we're trying to be as self-reliant and have as low an ecological footprint as we possibly can. So as part of that, this year, we started to look into how to reduce our dependence on external power. And a lot of that for us means solar. Now, I studied electronics at school, and when I first started looking into solar, I got horribly confused. There are so many different types of components and different ratings, and are they all compatible? And it gave me a headache, to be frank. But eventually I had a light bulb moment that the center of the system is the charge controller. And if you understand how that works, then you understand what solar panels will be compatible with it, what batteries will be compatible with it, how big will this system become, and what can I do to extend it? And once I got that, planning a system became much, much easier. And today, I want to share that understanding with you. Right, we need a representation of what's going on here. So I want you to imagine that as a wire that's coming from a solar panel producing electricity. And of course, blue rubber gloves and batteries, we all know that. So what happens? Well, the sun comes out and we start producing electricity. And in a happy way, that starts filling up our battery. And of course, on a day like today, it's a nice sunny day and the battery gets fuller and fuller and eventually of course it gets over full and it gets destroyed by having too much electricity put into it and that in part is what your charge control is for but it can do so much more you might decide you need a lot of electricity well if you need a lot of electricity you're going to need bigger wires producing more stuff streaming out and you probably are going to want a bigger store to put it in managing all of those compatibilities is why you need to understand charge controllers to understand charge controllers, we've got to understand that there are two types. There is a cheap and cheerful type known as PWM and a more expensive type that's much more sophisticated called MPPT. And very quickly, I want to explain the differences between them. PWM charge controllers are basically fancy switches and they only match panels to batteries of much the same voltage. So this one, for example, is intended to match a 12 volt panel to a 12 volt battery. And what it's doing is it's sensing how full the battery is. And as the battery drains a little bit, it lets a pulse of electricity go through to the battery, but it won't put more electricity into the battery than the battery can take. So on my electric fence, the energizer is using bits of electricity. And then when I've got this hooked up to a solar panel, that electricity is being replaced. If you imagine it visually, what it's doing is just putting little pulses of electricity into the battery and the pulse width modulation adjusts those pulses according to how much electricity can be allowed into the battery safely. So this is an MPPT charge controller and I want to just very quickly cover what it is, how it works and why in many ways it can be considered a more upmarket, more sophisticated charge controller than the PWM type. Uh, this particular one is made by a company called Bateria who watched some of our earlier episodes, reached out to us and said, well, we like what you're doing. Would you like to try one of our products? There's no expectation of a fancy review or anything. So we said, yes, please. We'd love to try one and it'll fit right into this episode. So thank you, Bateria. The MPPT is multi-power point tracking, and I think, imagine simply, that means it can use different voltages on the input than it's got on the output, and of course then different currents to match that up. Big solar panels tend to get quite high voltages in order to make them work efficiently. So a big solar panel might well be in the 40, 48 volt range, and you might be using multiples of those linked together. So you could very well have a 150 volt setup there. But you're not going to have a 150 volt battery on the other side of that. And what this clever box of tricks does is it plays with the voltages and the currents and matches up mismatched voltages on one side and on the other side. So you could take 150 volts of panels 
and put them into a 12 volt battery if that was your thing. And that makes the whole system much more flexible and it also allows you potentially to extend the system later. So looking at our visual representation, what this is doing is altering the power and the flow of water. Does that really exist with water? Well, yes, it's called a jet wash. And that alters electronically the power that's coming in and the power that's going out. So our MPPT charge controller will allow me to use these really big, higher voltage solar panels to charge my battery rate to create a bigger system. But of course, the next question then is, well, how many panels can I have and how should I wire them together? Well, the biggest constraint on that is actually going to be the power coming out of this and into the batteries. And the flow of current has to be managed and matched. Let me explain why. This is wire wool. It's just very fine wires in a bundle used to rub down paint, etc. But if I put a nine volt battery across this, the amount of current generated will cause the wires to actually get so hot they catch fire. So we have to manage the current through our solar system. Now that we know that too much current will actually cause problems with electronic systems and wires, we need to know what this one can deal with. And the material ones are handily labelled, and this is actually labelled as a 60 amp MPPT controller. It can actually take about 65 amps just to give a little margin for error there. But once we know that, we need to think about what kind of battery are we going to use. Now, this clever system can use 12 volt batteries, 24 volt batteries, 48 volt batteries, it doesn't care. But it's limited to 65 amps. So if we use a 12 volt battery like this, 12 volts times 65 amps equals 780 watts. So our system is going to be limited to 780 watts. If I take that away and put a 48 volt battery there, I can have the same system with the same charge controller running at about 3000 watts. So first things we've got to work out once we've worked out what our charge controller is, is what kind of battery size are we going to use? So we've worked out we're going to use a 12 volt battery for demonstration purposes here today. That gives us 780 watts to play with. Now you've got to be precise with these things. Those batteries are actually 12.8 volts, not 12 volts. And to be precise with the panels, we look to the panel on the back that gives the exact voltages and the exact currents. And this one's running at about 31 volts at about 13 amps. Having done all the maths, we know we can use two panels. So let's start wiring things together. Let's start wiring things together then. First things first, we're going to show some tips and tricks along the way just to make sure we do this safely. And the most important one of them is always wire your battery to your charge controller before the panels. You don't want to be putting power into the charge controller when it hasn't got anywhere to go. So battery first. In order to do that on the Bateria unit, there is an access panel at the bottom. And what you need to do is remove a couple of very small grub screws to give access to the terminals to attach the wires. Get yourself a little bowl or a pot to store those little tiny grub screws in because they're ever so easy to lose in the long grass. Once you've done that, take your wires and check the terminal labeling. They're very well labeled on the Bateria unit. Insert your wires into them and then tighten the wires fully, making sure they're fully secured on the terminals. With the leads attached to the charge controller, we've got to attach them to the battery. And there's an important note on these lithium ion phosphate batteries that they don't really like you using things like crocodile clips. You need to use proper crimped on battery lugs and screw them up tight with the appropriate washers. Now that we've connected up the battery, the display will come on. It's hard to see in this, but I'll take a picture of it in a normally lit room. And you can see that it auto detected the size of the battery, the type of the battery and the charge state onto the solar panels. So here's our two panels, we have to wire them together. But how are we gonna wire them together? Well, actually we've got choices. There's two different ways of doing it, pros and cons of each. So let me show them both to you. The simplest way perhaps is to take the negative terminal of panel one and just clip it together with a positive terminal of panel two. That leaves us with one negative and one positive terminal that we can connect to the charge controller. What does that do? Well, if we look at the charge plates, Again, what we get from the panels is we get roughly 31 volts and 13 amps. And if we wire them like this, which is called wiring in series, what that does is double the voltage. So instead of getting 31 volts, we're getting 62 volts, but it keeps the current static at 13 amps. Now, if we check the specification on the charge controller, it's good for up to 150 volts. So the 62 volts that we're creating 
is no problem at all. And keeping the current static, it means that we're not going to add extra heat and extra problems by increasing the current. There is a downside though. The current is flowing from panel one to panel two and through into the charge controller. Either panel gets damaged, then the current will be cut off from both. So what's the alternative? Well, what we could do is use something like this, which is called a Y connector. We connect together the two negatives into a single connection and the two positives into another single connection. And we take those two single connections and we attach those to the charge controller. And that's called wiring in parallel. And instead of increasing the voltage, that increases the current. So the voltage stays the same at about 31 volts, but the current goes from 13 amps to 26 amps. Is that okay for the charge controller? Yes, the charge controller is rated at 60 amps. So that's fine. What's the advantages and disadvantages? Well, the advantage is if either panel gets damaged, the other one keeps working. The disadvantage is because we've increased the amount of current that's flowing, we need to increase the thickness of the wire to cope with it. So I've made my mind up if I want series or parallel panels, I need to connect them up to the charge controller. Now, the easy way to do that is to create a little patch lead, stripped wire at one end, and on the other end, the appropriate MC4 plug. And these are the plugs you'll have seen me using on the back of the panels. They're really standard in solar stuff and they're waterproof and they clip together really nicely. Now, I make all my own leads for this because honestly, I want to be able to make them at exactly the right length for whatever task I've got at hand and using exactly the right wire thickness for the panel array that I'm using. If you would like to see a short video on how to create your own solar leads, let me know down in the comments and I'll make a short video showing how to make battery leads, how to make solar panel connector leads and all the rest of that kind of material. But yeah, so once I've got that lead, I could just connect that to the charge controller, connect the plug to the panels and away we go. But I'm not going to do that. And the reason I'm not going to do that could be quite apparent to anyone who's ever jump started a car. If you've ever done that thing where you connect up the crocodile leads to the car battery and you get a big bright flash, that's called arcing. And because basically electricity really wants to get where it's going and it will sometimes actually jump a short space of atmosphere to get where it's going. And that arcing can be quite dangerous and can damage sensitive components. So we want to avoid it when setting up our solar system. And the problem is, of course, those panels are constantly trying to generate electricity. So at a crude level, what I could do is cover the panels and then connect everything up. But I'm going to do something just a little bit more sophisticated in the long term. And what I'm going to do is I am going to connect one of these to the charge controller. This is just a fused circuit breaker and I'll connect it up in the off position. Then I'll connect the other end up to the panels. And when I'm good and ready, I'll throw the switch, it'll make the whole circuit live, it'll also make the whole circuit protected and fused, and it removes any chance of arcing. So I've checked all my wiring through, I made sure we've got the right plugs on the right leads, and it's time to connect up the panel to the circuit breaker. Now I've made sure twice the circuit breaker is in the off position. So we will collect the MC4 leads, open the circuit breaker and we really want this to be dull. We don't want this to go off like the Christmas lights. Just want a quiet click. And that's what we got. And now we're generating and storing electricity. So that's our take on how you can size your solar system, basing it around the charge controller, because the charge controller will dictate how much power you can put in, how much power you can take out, which in turn drives the types and arrangements of panels you need, the type of battery array that you need for storage. So overall, base it on a decent charge controller and your system should hang together quite easily. I want to do a very quick review on this Bateria Sunrock 60 that we used to show the whole thing off. Overall, it performed exactly as you would want it to. We could tell on the display the power that was coming in, the voltage, the ampage, the watts. We could see the power that was going out. We could see the state of the battery. We could see any loads that were on it. So it worked really, really well. 
I want to single out the instructions because the instructions did have really, really good information in it. All the specifications are in there, all the wiring diagrams are in there, all the operational use instructions are in there, and they're comprehensive. And that's not always the case. Some of these things are really hard to figure out. So, you know, big praise for whoever wrote the instruction book for the material. And they even included, as I always want to see, a little plate on the side that gives you the base information just in case you've lost the instruction book. How do we find it in use? Well, as I say, it worked. It did what it said on the tin. I do have a few little things that I would say could be improved. Um, the display's quite dim. It's hard to see in bright light. I would like to see a brighter backlight. The access panel is secured by grub screws, which are easily lost, and that's a massive irritant for me. I would much rather see a catch or magnets. And the case feels just a little bit flimsy compared to the likes of sort of Renogy or Victron or those slightly more upmarket units. But, you know, if you look at their website, they're very reasonably priced. They're arranged in a vast variety of sizes from 10 amp up to about 100 amp in terms of size. They also do very reasonably priced uh, lithium ion phosphate batteries, although I've not tested those. So overall, well worth a look if you're looking around trying to work out what's the right charge controller for you. If you've enjoyed today's video, can you spare us five seconds? Give us a thumbs up down below. If you've got any questions on solar setups, leave them down in the comments and we'll try and actually answer them in the comments or make another video to answer those questions for you. If you want to see those videos and what comes next on the series, tap on subscribe down there, hit the bell next to it, you'll hear every time we upload a new video. That's a free service, but it lets you know when anything's available to you. For today, thanks for joining us and come back and see us soon. Take care.